Okay, so we're going to talk very briefly about how to um, set up our um, shots so we can see them in the dome mode. Uh, so as we have it right now, um, I have the star globe in here, um, as you can see. Uh, and so that's all we really need. So we're going to just hide all those tools because they're nice if you can use them, but if you can't, that's all right. So we have a, a nice NURBS goblet floating in space. It's actually polygons now. I converted it. Um, and so we're going to uh, we're going to go to our render settings and we're going to set this to the the size that we're going to render it. Now, um, for me, I I want to eventually do 2K, which is 2048 by 2048, right? Um, but that may not be what you want to to get for your uh, for your your preview if you want to just test it out, and especially if you're going to do any high quality rendering or anything like that, that'll be really slow to test it out at that speed. At that size, we can do 1K if you want to, and uh, just as our test. But when we get our final render, we're going to do 2K. So we go 1K, we can hit close, and if we uh, if we click now at our resolution gate, we should get um, the entire uh, resolution gate. We can't see all of it on the screen until we do something like that and get our screen kind of square shaped. So this is what we'll render in this area. And again, usually I select my camera and I go down here and I set my... Um, I don't know, I always have trouble finding this. Display options. I set it to like completely black and completely opaque. And that way I don't see it. In this case it may make more sense to do it completely white and completely opaque so it doesn't get lost in, in space there. Yeah, I just said lost in space. Um, so let's go ahead and grab my camera. Let's say that what we're going to do is sort of zoom in on our uh, goblet from space and just see what that looks like. Maybe something like this. Okay, and I'm just going to do that over let's say 100 frames. Okay, um, so I have my camera selected. Now the thing we're we're having an issue probably visualizing is the uh, the way that this this is going to look. Okay, and so when we get our final render, what we're going to have is this area and the corners are going to be sort of chopped off, right? So we can't have anything interesting going on down here. Um, and so everything that everything else is going to be kind of, if we split this right down the center, like this, dead center, which I think I'm a little off, is, is probably about right there. That's straight above you, like that's right at the center of the dome. Okay, so that means everything over here is behind you, everything over here is to your right, and everything over here is to your left when you're viewing it. And this area right through here is kind of the sweet spot. Like this is the area where most people are going to be focusing their attention. Okay, so that's the way you want to kind of keep that in, in mind as we're working on this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select my camera, I'm going to pull out a little further, hit S. I'm going to um, slowly push in, maybe do a little bit of something like that, hit S, and so we just get this real slow push in on our, uh, on our goblet in space, right? Um, so now I want to test this out, and so if I play blast it, that's, that's cool, but you'll see that what the play blast wants to do is adhere it to some other so I can leave it at render settings and if I hit um, play blast you'll see it's going to render it with the white box so I don't really want that so I think I can hit escape so I could hide that and so I could render with or do a play blast that's all right to override it and so I don't think this is actually accurate either because this isn't a perfectly square 20, you know, 1024 by 1024. So the best way to get a good example of what this is going to look like is, uh, is probably just to render out something using Viewport 2.0 or the regular hardware renderer, right? And so I could just go ahead and render out um, an image sequence, or if you're in a big hurry, you could even probably do... Is this still a new AVI? 
I don't see it. So I'm just going to render out a quick JPEG sequence. Um, I'll call this delete me later. Um, and I'm going to do named underscore number dot extension. Um, we'll do 1 through 100. And so since I'm using the Maya hardware, I hit close. And then I go to render, batch render. And it should kick these out really quickly. Okay. So while it's doing that, I'm going to go set up a, uh, a scene. Uh, let me make sure it's going to render. Start. Go. There we go. So I'm going to go to After Effects. So I go to All Menus, Master Collection, and we're going to choose Adobe After Effects. Now, many of you probably haven't used After Effects before. It's all right. We're not going to be doing a whole lot with this. Um, we're mainly just going to be distorting it. Uh, no, there's not available space. Sure. Um, so I'm going to do a new composition. Okay. And in this new composition, I'm going to leave it at custom. I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio. And I'm going to do this at that 1K size. But of course, later we will do the 2K size. And so it's square pixels, you know, that's all that's fine. We hit OK. And you see we get this square object here. And so now I can go File, Import. I'll do Import File. I'm going to go look in that location. I just saved those files. UE1. Of course, it saved it in the last place I set my project which is hidden up here in these secret faculty folders, images, delete me later, it's a JPEG sequence, um, we'll do it as footage. I don't remember what I set the uh, frame rate on on this, so let's actually look. 12 frames per second, yeah that's exactly what I wanted. Um, let's delete that, create a new composition, do that again, 1024 by 1024 <laughs> frame rate, 24 uh, and we're going to hit OK. And so I'm going to right click on this and do interpret footage. Maybe do remember interpretation. Let's do main. So right now it's, good. it's, it's assuming that we want to play this image sequence at 30, but we don't. We want to play it at 24. And I'm just going to hit OK. So now you see the frame rates are the same on both of those. And I can drag this into my timeline. And so now what we have is um, if we hit play, we have that animation sequence. Now it's going to play it a little clunky um, because After Effects really wants to render each frame really well. Right? Um, but, you know, we have it. Okay. So now it should play back in real time. You'll see that it's still playing for some reason. So if I go back to this, I can... Uh, I need to get my time range set to the length of my video. Is there a way... Trim comp to work here, yeah. Did that work? I don't think that worked too. Um, and so now this is our our video sequence. So what we want to do now though is we want to see what the um, uh, what what the the shape of this should be. Um, and I actually haven't made this yet, but basically what I'll have is I'll have a, a mask image that I'll give you um, probably for 1024 and for 2048. That'll basically just be a circle with the black areas out on the edges. And so we can just drop that in on top of this, but I kind of forgot to make that. Um, actually, I guess we could make it make one of them now if we really wanted to in Photoshop, but it'll just be a single image that you just drop in there and it'll be the extent of it. I also believe that there's probably a way we can do a circle mask in here, but I am not great with After Effects, so knowing how to create a circle mask. I'm imagining it has something to do with the mat. But uh, anyway, 
don't worry about it. I'll just give you an image that you can just plop in there on top of it that's the right size. But the problem now is like this is nice. Like this looks good to us. This is what our video will look like. The problem is it's not distorted, right? This is this is the way it rendered out of uh, Premiere, and although it looks good, um, or rendered at a mile, though it looks good, it's not warped to the dome. And so what the dome is going to do is it's going to squash it around the edges here, so when we project it up on the dome, it can restretch it. So we're going to do that with an effect, and if we, we have to select our video, we go to Effect, Distort, Sphere Eyes. Okay, and so if we look at that now, Effect, Sphere eyes. This is the object that we have um, in our, uh, um, or this is the effect that we just added to our object, right? So you'll see that the center of the sphere is 512 by 512, which makes sense because it should be 1024 across, so it should be right dead in the center. So what should the radius of this be? Remember, radius is like half the, the width of the circle, so if we do this at 512 as well, You'll see that we, we get this, you can kind of see this dome that kind of bulges out in the center there. Um, so that needs to be right out to the edge, so 512. And so that's going to be the width of that. And so now, although this is going to render kind of, you know, um, blurry in our preview here, now this is what um, our video looks like. And you can see the, the difference between before and after. Okay, so this is um, what we need to be able to play back in the uh, um, in the tester to see how it's working. So I can go to File and Export. Um, I'm going to add this to the render queue. Oh, it's been so long since I've rendered, and so now I go to. Now I have to render it. So let's see. And so I added that to the render queue. Oh, the, the render queue is down here. Good job, Greg. Um, so what do we need? Our render settings, best full, oh, that looks good. Output put module, I'm going to do um, H264. Extend this down, H264, RGB. Um, let's try that. I hope that that's high. 3 megabits per second. That looks terrible. Um, so let's do this. So I'll crank that up. Because I also don't care if it's super small. Turn on 40 megabits per second. That sounds a little high, but um, maybe pre. Uh, Yeah, let's do H.264 Blu-ray. Let's just try that setting instead of H.264. Um, so you can find it there. And so that looks pretty good. Make sure we're getting the right frame rate. We are. And so I'm going to go ahead and render this. Now, you may have at least one render item queued in order to render. I feel like I do. Okay, thanks for walking me through this. I guess I was under, uh, Been a little while since I've done this. Color depth resolution solid. Uh, 
Oh, but that's where it is. Yeah. I don't want to do M4V. Let's actually just set this back to regular 64 format options, and we'll go and set this to the same settings, which I think was 20 and 20. Okay. So this may end up not being the best in the world, but we'll try it anyway. Output to MP4. I'm just going to put this on my desktop so we can uh, so we can look at it. So this is Goblet in the Sky. Save. And now when we render, it's going to render it apparently really slowly. It looks like it's going to take it about four minutes to render. <laughs> No, I don't think it's going to take a whole four minutes. So, um, so let's go ahead now. While it's rendering that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to my my desktop. Or I guess we could we could use the one up on the network if we want to. ATS UE one. Um, so under faculty, Greg. 3D animation outbox tools. And of course, you can pull this down yourself if you want to. We're going to open up this dome tester win and say run. And so once this output is done, when I did that, it should pop up a, a thing that asks me where I want to pull it from. So that's the that's the question there. I go to my desktop. So it's Goblet in the Sky. Let's see where After Effects is at on it. Almost done. Come on, After Effects, it's a Goblet in the Sky. You got this. Yay! I don't know if you heard that. It made a noise. Um, and so now I'm just going to grab up on the sky, 11 megabytes. This may be a little overly um, pixelated, so hopefully you can see this. And so now we have our goblin in the sky. And so we can watch this over and over again in our little virtual dome. Yeah, that overly compressed it, but it needs to be higher than 20. And so you can see where the interest areas are. Okay, and so now the things that you may not be expecting to happen are happening in this, which is um, when we watch it from our perspective, it feels like the goblet drops here very quickly toward the bottom of the screen, right? And so if we want to keep it up here higher, then we need to adjust our animation for that. And so that's why this is a necessary pass on this. Now, if you if you have time to work on this um, before uh, before class tonight. Um, try to get a version of it in this that we can just pop in the dome tester so we can see how this looks. But if not, you need to be doing this sometime within the next few days. You need a, a version of your entire video that you can play in here so you can look at it and say this is either working or it's not working. Um, and so this is, in this case, not working. I would want to go back and make sure that my goblet stayed a little higher and didn't feel like it drops down on the screen so quickly. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and stop this video now. Um, and so hopefully this gives you uh, um, an idea of how to do this. Again, we're going to, when we end up compressing this, we're going to do a much higher compression than this because this is pretty, uh, pretty blurry. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.